What up guys, in this video I'll be going over the Shop Perfecto 626 VN leather jacket. I'll be going over all the essentials that you guys need to know like the fit, the material, the construction and at the end of this video I'll also show you guys my favorite way of styling a leather jacket. Let's get started. To give you guys a little history, Shot invented the leather biker jacket look over a hundred years ago. They're also the first to put a zipper on a jacket which is pretty damn crazy if you think about it. Way back in the 50s, you see Marlon Brando rock this jacket in the Wild Ones, which really set off the popularity of the biker jacket look. You'll go on to see other cultural icons like James Dean and Elvis rock this jacket as well. Now moving back to the Shot 626VN jacket, the way that Shot likes to name their jacket is that the 6 indicates that it's their slim fit. Their other models like the 118, the 1 will indicate that it's their regular fit. The VN stands for vintage, meaning this jacket goes through a coating process that gives us this nice vintage look. As you guys can see, there are fading and discoloration all throughout the jacket in areas such as the lapels, the epaulets, and the sleeves, just to name a few. And another thing about the vintage process is that you don't have to worry about the jacket breaking in. This jacket is pre-broken into which I'm a big big fan of. Now I know a lot of you guys like having a fresh leather jacket to break into yourself but I'm not a fan at all. I initially bought the 618 and that jacket was so stiff I could barely move my arms and it was so uncomfortable. Just to give you guys an example here's a picture of the 618 that I bought. Look it's like literally standing on its own now that's that's crazy right there. I don't have the patience to break in a leather jacket because I heard it can take years until it can finally conform and fit comfortably against your body and I just don't want to deal with that. So that was the main reason why I started looking at jackets with a vintage coating because I wanted something that can fit in my body right off the rack and the 626VN does exactly that. Now let's go over the measurements. So I got this jacket in size medium. Now one thing to keep in mind is that because this jacket goes through a vintage coating process, the jacket shrinks. So you would need to go up a faux size on this. For the dimensions of this jacket, starting off with shoulder to shoulder measures to 16 inches. Chest length or pit to pit measures to 19 inches. Sleeve lengths are 25 inches the back length is 25 inch as well. So how does this jacket fit? For reference, I'm 5'10", 160 pounds with a 37 inch chest and a 30 inch waist. When the jacket is unzipped, it fits me very comfortably. The sleeve lengths are perfect, it stops right at my wrists. The length is very good as well, it's not overly long where it covers my ass or too short where it's like a crop top. But when it's zipped, it's a little tight. You can see the V formation in the chest area when I zip it up. This is a good indicator that it might be a little tight in the chest, but the jacket on the model on their website also has that V-shape formation when zipped, so I'm guessing it's normal for this jacket to show that. Then again, this is a brand new jacket, so I'm hoping that over time it'll stretch out a little bit more because I really want to be able to layer this with a sweater or a hoodie in the future. Now for my riders out there, how does this jacket fit when you're on your bike? I'll be using Using my Yamaha as an example and let's go out there and test this out. When you're in a riding position, your sleeve length should sit exactly at your wrist, which it does not in my case. As you guys can see, it's about an inch short. It's definitely not a big issue when you wear riding gloves because those gloves tend to go past your wrist, which would make up for that gap. However, the biggest downside to this jacket is that there are no gussets in the back, meaning your range of motion is very limited. As you guys can see, the back panel leather looks like it's stretching out too much for its own good. This is definitely not ideal when you're riding, especially when you have to maneuver through traffic. Last thing to point out is there's no extra room to add any extra CE rated armor in the jacket. But since this is cowhide leather, it will help prevent any road rash when you take a spill, but it will not prevent broken bones. So in conclusion, I do not recommend this jacket for riding. This is more of a fashion piece than anything else. On to the material of this jacket. The thickness measures in at 1.5 millimeters and it features premium cowhide leather. Cowhide leather is the stiffest and toughest type of leather, but since this has a vintage coating on it, the leather is very soft and supple. It feels a little bit like lambskin but with more thickness and weight to it. It has silver hardwares all around. On the lapels, it features the famous shell casing shot buttons. And yes, these are actual shell casings. 
Moving on to the arms, you see a big silver zipper that does a very good job at tapering that sleeve opening against your wrist when zipped all the way. On the inside of the sleeves, there's also a nice cotton lining for breathability. Now this is my favorite part of the jacket. Look at that nice sexy single giant piece of leather on the back panel. Shot doesn't play around with their quality. Most companies these days use scraps of leftover leather and stitch them together to form that back panel. For example, take a look at Saint Laurent. Now this looks like a very beautiful jacket in the front, but hold up. In the back, it looks like they stitched together 5 panels of leftover leather. That just shows that they are really cutting corners in terms of their quality and craftsmanship. And what blows my mind is that this jacket is $5,000. That's just highway robbery right there because I can almost guarantee you that the quality of that jacket is not better than shot. Now let's talk about all the other features on this jacket. There's a small pouch for spare change or whatever you can get to fit in here. There's also a slanted pocket on the left chest. The jacket does not have star studs on the epaulets that you'll see on the 613s. I'm not a fan of the star studs so this is a plus for me. A thoughtful feature that I'm a big fan of is you have the ability to button the buckle so it doesn't dangle. And on the other end you can simply loop it back through. Personally I really don't like it when the belt dangles everywhere. It gets annoying when you're walking and it constantly slaps against your body. So this feature is a big big plus for me. On the inside this features a nice red cotton flannel lining which is a first for me because I've never seen other jackets with a flannel lining before. But this cotton lining is a big plus because it will keep you warm. If you decide to go with a budget leather jacket you see that most have a polyester lining which is a lot cheaper and the quality is a lot worse. On your left side you have a nice big pocket for extra storage. Now let's take a look at 3 easy outfits that anybody can style with a leather jacket. For the first outfit, I'm wearing a button up with floral prints. Hey, I like floral, don't judge me. I chose this red floral pattern to match with the red lining on the inside of this leather jacket. For the jeans, I'm wearing black denim from Banana Republic and Chelsea boots from Thursdays. I think this is a great look if you want to bring out some color and stand out a little bit more compared to when you're wearing a plain shirt underneath. For the second outfit, I'm wearing a white tee underneath with light wash denim from Banana Republic and white sneakers from New Balance. This look was inspired from the movie Grease when I saw John Travolta wearing a leather jacket over a plain white tee and is definitely a very classic look. The light colors are a contrast to the black leather jacket and overall I think this is a very timeless outfit. For the last outfit, you can never go wrong with an all black look. Black goes good with every skin tone, every body shape, every gender, every height. It just works with everything. I'm wearing a plain black tee underneath, black denim from Banana Republic, and black cap toe boots from Thursdays. This is hands down my favorite outfit in my wardrobe. And there you have it guys, 3 easy outfits that you can style with a leather jacket. Now how much does this jacket retail for? The 626VN is priced at $900 which depending on who you ask, I would say that this is in the mid range pricing for leather jackets and I think it's worth every penny. To be honest, I didn't pay retail for this jacket. I found this on eBay and it was sold as brand new with tags. I ended up getting this for $530 which I think it's an incredible, incredible deal. I definitely recommend taking some time to check out sites like eBay because you can luck out and find amazing deals. Now leather jacket is a must for every guy's closet. It's an investment piece that's gonna last you for years and years and years. So my recommendation is if you're new and still experimenting your style, then get something cheap, get synthetic leather that's under $100. And if you like the look and if you're ready and when the time comes, definitely get a good quality leather jacket. And when I say high quality, get something that's full grain, at least 1.5 millimeters thick, and make sure that back panel of leather is made from one giant piece of leather rather than multiple scraps of leather stitched together. Also definitely check out sites like eBay if you don't want to pay for retail. I personally think Shot is the go-to brand if you're buying a leather jacket because I don't think anyone can beat their quality for their price. And also they invented the leather jacket so it just feels wrong if you go with anybody else. That's it for this week's video. Hopefully this video helped you out. 
don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.